Thanks for watching. And from the producer of Derivative Equals Arc Length comes another spicy special. Namely, is there a function whose derivative equals to the surface area? And yes, there is. And it's a function you've all seen before, but you probably can't guess. All right, let's get into it. OK, so what exactly do we want? We want to find one function f such that the derivative of f, so f prime of x, equals to the surface area, let's say from 0 to x, which is given by the integral from 0 to x of 2 pi f of t, so 2 pi times a function, times the arc length, which is f prime of t squared plus 1 dt. Now, if you do this problem on its own, it'll be very hard, or maybe even impossible. Even Wolfram Alpha can't do it. And to be honest, I was actually almost giving up on this because it was very hard. But it turns out, under certain assumptions, it actually becomes doable. Still hard, but doable. Namely, let's assume the following. First of all, assume f is positive. Makes things a little bit easier. And moreover, let's put a very specific initial value. f of 0 equals square root of 2 over pi. Otherwise, there will be an integral that will be much harder if we don't require this. Moreover, notice if you uh, plug in f prime of 0, then we get integral from 0 to 0, which is 0. So a consequence is also that f prime of 0 equals 0. OK, and with that said, now let's try to solve this kind of differential equation. And in particular, notice we can now just differentiate with respect to x. So using our body, the FTC, so fundamental theorem of calculus, we get f double prime of x equals 2 pi f of x times square root of f prime of x squared plus 1. Well, and it gets very exhausting to write f all the time. So let's just write y instead. So what we need to solve is y double prime equals 2 pi y times square root of y prime squared plus 1. And now it's nice to separate out this y double prime and this square root. So let's put the square root on the denominator. And we get y double prime. Let me write that here. And then we get y double prime over square root of y prime squared plus 1 equals 2 pi y. Now, what we would like to do is using a reverse Chen Lu, so maybe like differentiating this square root. But the only problem is, if you differentiate y prime squared, you get 2 y double prime times y prime. So it would be nice to make an extra y prime appear. But we can if we multiply both sides by y prime. And then what's nice is, turns out you can write both sides as a derivative. And we end up getting the following. Derivative of square root of y prime squared plus 1 equals the derivative of pi y squared. Because again, if you differentiate this, you get 1 over 2 square root of this gibberish times 2 y prime times y double prime. And the twos cancel out, and we're happy. And on the other hand, here, if you differentiate pi y squared, you get 2 pi y y prime. OK, great. But now, if the derivatives are equal, it means the functions are equal up to a constant. So we get square root of y prime squared plus 1 equals pi y squared plus some constant. But now, remember, we did have initial conditions. So let's take advantage of that. If you plug in x equals 0, remember I told you a consequence is that f prime of 0 is 0. So we end up getting square root of 1 equals pi. Remember, y was this weird square root of 2 over pi? 
Now it makes maybe a little bit more sense because we get 2 over pi plus some constant and the pi's cancel out and you end up getting that the constant is minus 1. Very good. So this square root equals pi y squared minus 1. And let's see what we can do with that. Okay, because the beautiful thing is now we can actually solve for y prime. So at every step things get simpler, which means we're on the right track. So we get y prime squared plus 1 equals pi y squared minus 1 squared. So y prime squared equals pi y squared minus 1 squared minus 1. And then we end up getting, if you take square roots, y prime is plus minus square root of pi y squared minus 1 squared minus 1. That said, remember the following. What did we have? We had f prime equals integral of 2 pi f times bunch of square roots. But remember, we assumed f is positive, and of course square root is positive. So actually, f prime, or here y prime, is positive. So it cannot be negative square root. So that's also nice. We get y prime equals square root of this gibberish. And then we would like to use a technique that I love and hate at the both time because it works, but it's not very rigorous, namely the separation of variables. So let's write dy over dx equals square root of pi y squared minus 1 squared minus 1. And then let's switch this. So a little switcheroo. And what we get is the following, I think, dy over square root of pi y squared minus 1 squared minus 1 equals dx. And now let's integrate this. So what we get is integral of this equals integral of that. Okay. Integral of dx, that is x plus some constant. I'll still write c, even though it might not be the same constant. And now, well, let's roll up our sleeves and try to integrate this. And by the way, if there weren't a pi, it would be actually a bit harder to integrate. So uh, it's nice that we have this. OK. And here's the idea. And again, it's not obvious at all. But for this integral, it would be nice if this pi were actually 2. And for this, then, let's just use a quick change of variables. If you let u be square root of pi over 2y, y, then what we get is, I think, dy is square root of 2 over pi. We'll try again. Whoa, it reappears again. And integral of du and square root of all right, then um, pi y squared over 2 equals u, so um, pi y squared is 2u squared. So 2u squared minus 1 squared minus 1. Okay. And by the way, that was the part where I almost gave up, because before I didn't have pi or anything, and then Wolf from Alpha told me, don't try, even try this. And, but luckily, I was able to tweak this to make this work. OK, and now for reasons that, again, will not, is not clear yet, okay, but will be clearer in a second. Well, you see square root of something squared minus 1. It would be nice to try out secant to see if this works. And in fact, you'll see it will work. So let u be secant of theta. Then again, well, <laughs> it's c of theta now, secant of theta, then du, again, is secant tangent, tangent theta d theta. And it turns out this whole thing will simplify tremendously up to the point where it's actually a miracle. Because let's see what's going on. First of all, let's calculate 2u squared minus 1. So 2u squared minus 1 
actually, even better, let's square this. So 2u squared minus 1, that becomes 2 secant squared theta minus 1. And then let's square this. And what this becomes is just 4 secant to the fourth to the fourth of theta minus 4 a secant squared of theta plus 1. And the nice thing is we're now subtracting 1. So this 1 disappears. But don't worry, you are still the 1. Okay. All right, and then. 2u squared minus 1 squared minus 1 then becomes 4 secant to the fourth theta minus 4 secant squared theta. And the nice thing is the 4 secant squared theta can factors out. So we get 4 secant squared theta and then times secant squared theta minus 1. But this now conveniently simplifies to tangent squared theta. So we get 4 secant squared theta, tangent squared theta. And man, if only we could square root this. But remember, we don't need this. We need square root of that. So again, conveniently, this simplifies to uh, 2 secant theta, tangent theta. Which, remember, this is just, I think, du. So in the end, now you see there's this nice simplification. So what did we have? We had, let's see, um, uh, 2 over square root of pi, uh, square root of 2 over pi, integral of 1 over, again, square root of 2u squared minus 1 squared minus 1, and then du. So what this becomes, square root 2 over pi, integral of, again, secant theta, tangent theta, over 2, secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. And isn't it nice how math works out sometimes? This cancels out, and essentially, you just need to integrate 1 half. All right, so this becomes in square root of 2 over pi, integral of 1 half d theta. But then this square root of 2 sort of cancels out with this 2. And you end up getting 1 over square root of 2 pi. And then integral of d theta is theta. And I believe theta u was arc, sorry, u was secant of theta. So theta was arc secant of u. But then what was u? u was square root of pi over 2y. So in the end, we get 1 over square root of 2 pi sec arc secant of a square root of 2 over pi. Or one second, uh, of pi over 2, why that's it. OK, great. Again, usually it's very hard to evaluate this integral. But now it's very nice. But remember, what was that equal to? It equals to x plus some constant. And this will ultimately allow us to solve for y. And so now we get the following. So 1 over square root of 2 pi arc secant of square root of pi over 2 y equals x plus some other constant. But now, again, let's plug in some initial values. If x equals 0, this becomes 1 over square root of 2 pi arc secant of square root of pi over 2. Oh, and remember, y was square root of uh, 2 over pi. Time equals 0 plus c, so equals c. And then look, this cancels out, and we're left with arc secant of 1. And the easiest angle that makes secant equals to 1 is 0. So this just becomes 0. So our constant is 0. And therefore, what we're left with is this whole thing equals x. Well, and now let's solve for this. So it's arc secant 
of square root of pi over 2. y equals square root of 2 pi x. Then square root of pi over 2. y is secant of square root of 2 pi x. And last but not least, we finally get our formula. So um, then what we get is y equals square root of pi 2 over pi arc secant, uh, sorry, just secant of square root of 2 pi x. And this, um, ladies and gentlemen, is the function whose derivative equals to the surface area. Again, who would have thought? And by the way, um, let's just quickly check that it satisfies our conditions. Well, yes, it is positive, at least for a while, at least on some short interval containing 0. And moreover, if you do y of 0, that becomes square root of 2 over pi times 1, which is square root of 2 over pi. And also, what is the derivative? Well, y prime it's uh, square root of 2 over pi, and then basically secant times tangent, and then probably it's, uh, you know, secant of square root of 2 pi x times tangent of uh, square root of 2 pi x times square root of 2 pi. But because of that tangent at 0, it becomes 0. So in fact, it satisfies those three identities. You could check, if you're very smart, that um, that it satisfies the differential equation, but again, I plugged it into Wolfram Alpha and it gave up as well. Okay. Not, not to say you can't do it, but definitely try it out. All right, and again, I, I don't know the physical significance of this, like maybe it makes sense physically, but it's just a function, I think. It starts here, let me see, yeah, maybe starts here and then goes to infinity at some point, so it does blow up, but it's quite nice. And all right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.